Hey guys, welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is on the HEADS. The acronym stands for Health Experts and Disruptors. Let's dive in. Howdy guys, welcome back to the Positive Experience Podcast. Today's segment is on HEADS. The acronym stands for Health Experts and Disruptors. My guest is Crystal Henry here from Prime Movement Therapy. Morning, Crystal. How are you? I'm very well. Great. Now, we, we have just um, c- come across each other's paths and we're getting quite friendly from what we're building together. And we can potentially circle back to that at the very end. I also want to say good morning to your newborn, Eva, who will be joining us. So if there is a bit of googling and gagging, that's uh, where it's coming from. So, um, yeah, I appreciate the audience's uh, patience with us. Um, where I'd like to start, Crystal, is just um, to give us a, a snapshot, maybe spend a few minutes on uh, your English accent and where it all began for you. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm from the UK, I'm in the middle of the UK, um, a little place, a county called Warwickshire. And um, I lived there all through my school years until I was about 21. So I went to school there. Well, actually, I tell a lie. I, actually, I was born in England, but I lived in Abu Dhabi for maybe five years because my dad was an engineer so I lived there until I was about five and then I moved back to the UK and um, so I think traveling has always been in my blood which will sort of tie in with the rest of my journey and the story that I have to tell um, so yeah so then I was in the UK went to school went to university um, and I've always been into sports sports been my absolute life um, which has been a blessing so um, netball from a very young age um, karate, I got my black belt when I was 12. Um, wow. I helped with teaching. Um, so it's it's really framed my life. And um, I think being in sports, both as a team sport and individually, it really has helped with confidence. And there she um, is. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> She's um, very chatty. She wants to join in the conversation. And um, so it yeah, helped with confidence, helped with meeting new people. And that's what I'm all about, really sort of connecting with um, you know, as many people as possible and learning from other people and helping other people is a big part of my life. And um, so I got injured um, doing netball and karate. I um, had the subluxation of my knee and it happened every year. And I was just like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, you know, it was devastating. I couldn't compete as much as I wanted to. Um, so I sort of had to back down a little bit in terms of the intensity that I was working at and relook at the type of sort of training I was doing. And it made me sort of think at that point, okay, well, how do people get back from this? Like, I don't want to just stop and be sedentary. So that got me into sports therapy and injuries and um, massage and rehab. And so I went to university and I did a degree in sports therapy and after that, um, I did a personal training course as well. So it sort of married up quite well with my sports therapy. So training, rehab. Um, and then after uni, I was like, well, I want to get a job, but I don't want to stay in the UK. The weather is horrific. It's miserable here. Um, there's not that many opportunities. And so I started on my hunt to think about where I could go. But I didn't want to just do like a season abroad um, at the typical season air sort of role. So I really looked into it and how I could utilize my degree and my skills and my knowledge. And so I um, found a, um, like a sports resort, which was in Greece with a company called Mark Warner, who are like a um, sort of sports, um, they, they run sort of sports holidays. So you can go and learn tennis or sailing or have PT. Um, but still enjoy, you know, the sights and sceneries and the culture of wherever you are. Um, So that was in Greece, in San Agostino. So that was my first sort of role where I was sort of working as a massage therapist. And um, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to get to travel. Um, I'm really going to meet new people, which I certainly did. And that made some lifelong friends. Um, But it turned to be an interesting role in terms of the work-life balance wasn't quite what I expected. Um, and I guess the staff accommodation was a little different to maybe what the, um, you know, customer's accommodation was. So there's a lot of adjusting and coming out of uni, I was obviously used to sharing with people. Um, but yeah, that was very, a bit of an eye opener in terms of working abroad. 
um, like the food and just a real different um, sort of experience. Um, wisens you up a little bit and opens your eyes for sure. Um, but it was a great role. And so um, I worked doing massage for people that were on their sort of sports holidays. And so that was in Greece, yeah. And I thought, right, well, I don't want to go home yet. So what can I do next? So whilst I was there, because it was sort of a six month um, role, I was looking at where I could go next and learning from obviously not every role abroad is going to be amazing and the environment's not always going to be great. I stumbled across a company called Verbia Touch and they were based in Verbia in Switzerland. And it was a smaller boutique company um, led by Brigitte and Marcus, who are just wonderful, wonderful people. And this is probably one of the best roles I've had in my life. Um, so I flew to Switzerland. Um, we only could work a small amount during the day due to restrictions of visas and things like that. Um, but we worked with uh, recreational professional skiers, um, working um, as you know, stretching, massage, recovery from, from your ski during the day. Um, so that was amazing. And Switzerland is absolutely beautiful. The work-life balance was definitely a bit more in favour of the sort of life um, with a bit of work as well. We would probably work maybe five to six hours a day because obviously most people ski throughout the day and then it'll be in the evening they come down for their treatment. So, um, and, and not everyone does that. Some people just go on to apres ski and that's their recovery. So that's okay too. But um, yeah, we met lots of people there from professional skiers, snowboarders, um, celebrities, and then the recreational sort of um, skier and snowboarder as well. So from there, I moved back to the UK because I uh, sort of rekindled my connection with my husband, Sean, and he was sort of like, well, this is great, but if we want to have a family and be together, then you can't be spawning off traveling around and loving life on your own so I moved back with a, um, a sort of requirement that we wouldn't stay in the UK and he's a surveyor so um, I sort of am quite flexible in the fitness industry and um, you know doing massage you can kind of work anywhere which obviously previously I had and so I sort of said to Sean that's fine you know I'm really flexible I don't mind where we go but I really want to go somewhere other than the UK so that brought us to Australia and we've been here for about five years now. Just um, on that, yeah. with, with the Australian piece, because I just want to get a timestamp because you've gone from your degrees um, in the UK, then six months in Greece, and then you spent, was it a year or a couple of seasons in Switzerland? Just six months. So they were both six months since. Okay, yeah. great. So I think having an upbringing where you travelled a lot, you put yourself in uncomfortable circumstances, but you saw, you know, the opportunity with being in challenging position. Like a lot of people may have fallen over with that Greek experience, you know, but then you saw it as the half glass full, uh, the glass half full sort of scenario. So um, you, before we move into the Australian piece, was was there a aha moment given your experience at university, your experience in Greece and Switzerland, growing up, traveling a lot. Was there a reason why Australia was potentially one of your candidates? Maybe, was it maybe Asia or Canada? Is there a reason why Australia was was the next place to go? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah there was definitely a major plan being from England, um, but definitely opportunity and I guess being an English person, my vision of Australia was this very sporting sort of mm. country, especially Melbourne. So that was the reason why we sort of had that on our list. We did also have New Zealand, um, but, but the opportunity came up for Sean in Australia. So obviously with him having to be able to work as well, we, um, we had the opportunity of Australia first. So we took that one. Perfect. So, okay, Melbourne made the short list. And when you came to Melbourne and you landed on your feet with your family, well, with you and Sean at the time, um, what, what's your main passion in driving you forward at that time? So was well, it very much leveraged off your experience in massage and sports therapy or were there a few things that you wanted to experience first before you, you really wanted to lay the roots deep? Yeah, well, travel um, is a big thing for me. So I didn't want to just get here and get straight into work. So I travelled a bit of Asia before I got here. Sean obviously came to here straight into work. 
Um, and I was, I was very lucky um, that I actually managed to get a job within the first week. Yeah. And I started working for the Australian of Fitness. And that's, um, that role really shaped me in terms of um, getting back to the roots of learning again. You know, it's been a while since I've been um, learning about my craft. And um, this was more towards um, fitness and training and how I could strengthen my knowledge in that area to assist with my massage as well. So I worked there as a trainer and assessor. And right. um, that was the sort of next chapter. And with that, if if that was um, what year, if you can place that that time with the Australian Fitness Institute. So that would have been 2014-15. Okay, so five years along to 2020. Could you reel off a couple of the other um, places that you have worked or things that you've done? Because um, what, what I'm trying to bridge the gap from is getting to prime movement therapy because yeah. you've, you've chalked up a lot of these feathers in the cap and then ultimately there's just something that you needed to do for yourself. So could you just paint that picture for us? Yeah, I think it's just I've always helped other people and um, other people with their projects and being um, a part of that is great, but I wanted to share my passion and my sort of um, tweak on things and the way I look at supporting clients and my sort of culture with clients and their client-centered care. So I always when I was in uh, Sydney with the Institute of Fitness, I thought, well, I'll start it as a side hustle. So to start with prime movement, it was prime movement massage therapy. And I just started with massage. And that was a sort of side hustle for me a long time alongside full-time work. And um, that was my first aha moment. I was like, well, how the hell did it take me this long when I'm you know, so passionate and I love my role as a massage therapist I love how I can connect and support the community around me. Why, you know, why did it take me this long? And I think that's a big thing in many people's lives. You know, there's never a good time to take that risk. Just take it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so from there, I um, progressed with prime movement massage therapy. Um, it got bigger and bigger as I met more people and supported more people. And then with my role with the Institute, that sort of fizzled out as they did some um, re, rejiggling with the Institute of Fitness. I moved to Melbourne with Sean, um, working from um, a satellite office here, didn't work out too well. So I was like, okay, well, this might be my time to take the leap and I'll, I'll go head on in with prime movement massage therapy. And this will be, this will be my opportunity to just go all out. But um, like a lot of people, I got scared. And I didn't take that leap. And so I got another job and I worked um, for F45 and that worked, progressed to working with KX as well as the company that I worked for brought into both franchises. And that was a massive part of my life again, because it was my routing here and sort of meeting so many people out here in the West and in Wyndham. And um, I've, I've absolutely loved working with MMCD and F45 and KX, and I still do. Um, but slowly, but surely, I've, I've sort of kept taking that little step towards adding in and building prime movement massage therapy. And then we found out last year I was pregnant. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, well, this is another opportunity now where I can like, you know, use my maternity leave to upskill, really focus more on um, training and prenatal and postnatal training and um, get my teeth into it and use this as an opportunity to, to take that leap. And I'm still on that sort of verge. I'm still verging on, you know, going all out, but still supporting um, on other little projects as well. So whether it be, you know, KX classes um, and supporting there. Um, and then obviously working and meeting you and the Better Back Blueprint program. Perfect. And, you know, I think um, that's a nice little teaser. Thanks for that plug. The, the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm moving towards is um, when you are building a, a side hustle, it's just getting to that point of going all in and, and making that decision. And, and I know it's um, been a steady um, movement that, that you're heading towards is there um something that you would as, as you are heading towards more of your own full-time work on your your primary passion is there one thing that really resonates with you 
in, in running your own business and growing your own business? Is it more so that you just really love dealing with a certain type of person that you've become really experienced with? Um, also having a hand with KX Pilates plus F45, which is a really big group training um, outfit. Um, you can kind of almost grab a lot of the great things that you've learned there and then apply it to, you know, your patient-centered service. Um, yeah, it's, it's really important. So I guess, I guess my question is, moving forward, what would be the main thing that drives your passion with prime movement therapy? I think um, it, it evolved very naturally and organically. And a lot of my friends and family were starting to have children and they were looking to me for guidance. And that was just before we were moving here and people were coming to me and saying, look, I'm pregnant, what can I do? And although as a trainer, a personal trainer, um, I can guide them with that. I, I just thought, you know, there's so much more I need to learn um, and so much more I want to learn to help myself when I eventually have children as well. And I think that sort of was the sort of aha moment. Of, okay, this is my niche. This is what I want to learn more about. Um, I find it absolutely um, fascinating how the woman's body can change and adapt to the demands of pregnancy and then you know, recovery afterwards, you know, it's an absolute miracle. Um, and it's such a beautiful position to be in, um, having the unique blend of massage and training to be part of the full journey. So, you know, training mom before she gets pregnant, uh, massage is a big part of training in a way in terms of recovery, but also as part of, you know, helping make that pregnancy journey a lot easier and reducing those typical pregnancy aches and pains. Um, and then supporting mama through her pregnancy journey with training as well. Bless you. And then after that, um, helping mom get back to feeling her again. You know, it's a big change physically, mentally, psychologically, um, in every shape and form. And I think now being a mum myself, it really helps add to my experience and knowledge to support mums through this special time in their life. <laughs> Thanks for that, Eva. She's added some, some of her own two cents. With that, I'd love um, to, if, if there's a myth that you'd love to debunk in, in working with mums, um, whether it's in the early stage where they're still carrying, maybe it's when they're um, you know, postpartum, or maybe it's much later when, when the children, the newborn's a toddler. Is there one um, reoccurring theme that you always find yourself repeating on, on debunking a myth, perhaps? Myth, but a common a real common occurrence for me or questions that I get asked is when can I start training again and I think um, a lot of people think once they've had that six-week check with their doctors that they can get back to training and they can to a degree but it's you know really paired back to the basics so you can't go back to your 45 class you know at six weeks um, and I think just re-education around when you can start and what you can start with um, and also I think um, especially new mums everything's new so we're quite on guard we're cautious and um, a lot of the time people say well you can't do that you can't train while you're pregnant so you can't lift those weights um, you can't have a massage um, you can you just need to make sure you are being supported with a qualified healthcare professional and that you ask questions. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to um, reach out. Like everyone's um, gone through the same sort of process. And I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as mums to be a certain way or look a certain way. And I, I think it's important to take that out of the equation and be kind to ourselves. Right. Great advice. With that, if um, if in your own work with Prime Movement Therapy, plus with um, the other guys that you've worked alongside, is there one common injury that you've come across that new mums are really unsure about? Uh, common injury for new mums? Um, not that, that they're unsure about. I mean, common injuries is the back pain, back pain, shoulders, um, but ones that they wouldn't know about. I guess um, there's a lot of questions around abdominal separation. Yeah. Um, that's something that mums are not, maybe not aware of or how that affects your training. 
and recovery. Um, nothing that I can think of that's come up consistently that people aren't aware of, no. But those would be the common things, back pain, abdominal separation, yeah. Perfect. I think um, in, a, in a clinical setting, like within a physiotherapy clinic, we do see those things um, quite a lot too. So questions around or big question marks around abdominal separation when it's safe to start not necessarily, you know, lifting weights, but just even care with lifting their new bub, you know, shifting furniture mm -hmm. around the house. Um, paired up with that potentially is, is pelvic floor issues with incontinence, um, which is a medical concern too. Um, but the back mm -hmm. pain is overwhelmingly the most popular um, undesired problem of, of um, being a mum, unfortunately. Poor body is put under a lot of stress. So based off that, I think that's a perfect segue as we head down the home stretch here in a lot of the things that we would be working on together, which um, we'll spend some time talking about, the Better Back Blueprint. But in saying that, is there any special um, information that you would like to share from Prime Movement Therapy? I know that you're doing a lot of great stuff um, online with the challenges that we all find ourselves in. Um, did you want to take a minute and speak about that for a moment, Crystal? Eva's thought she'd say hello. Um, so Prime Movement Therapy, our projects at the moment, we're working, obviously in these COVID times, it's very much online-led. So we've got a few little projects that are online. Um, you can have one-to-one -one support or even um, we've got a program called Moving After, Moving um, Beyond Birth. So that one is like a 15-week program. Um, you can start it pretty much straight away. Um, and when I say moving on birth, it's, as you said before, you know, linking to um, thinking about those actions that or activities we do through the day and how we can um, look at our body mechanics and posture. So in that first six weeks, um, you know, training is, is not really training, it's reconnection, um, re-educating, uh, re-engaging. And they're probably the three main things that we focus on. And um, it's really got hints and tips along the way, you know, guidance on, you know, additional sort of checks with healthcare professionals um, and, yeah, just supporting mum, new mums particularly, on getting back into just moving again, feeling themselves. Perfect. And we'll have all that information that Crystal's just mentioned um, in the link to this bio. We'll send you to all that great information Prime Movement Therapy is offering. And we're also partnered up together in building something called the Better Back Blueprint. So for new mums who are really struggling with low back pain, um, they, there's a lot of common um, determining factors on why that may be the case. And you have the support of two professionals working to help you with your back pain. Crystal with her great personal training experience and myself as a physiotherapist helping you from a stability aspect as well. So we'll have more information for that on, on this. So again, the link in the bio and there'll be a lot more information um, where you can download the actual full program brief. Um, there'll be some details there. And obviously it's very exciting and putting something together in partnership with Crystal, who's passionate about her work. But at the same time, we really see this as a valuable thing to help new mums. So if you're really interested, we'll, we'll send you some information. We'll send you to a page where there's a lot more information. Um, so I just really would, would like to thank Crystal for her time today and little Eva for being a guest on the Positive Experience podcast this morning. Um, she's very passionate about her work. And this segment, Heads, Health Experts and Disruptors, has been a successful little foray for little Eva. It's her first podcast too. <laughs> Good. Any final comments for us today, Crystal, before you run away? Comments. Super excited to be obviously involved with the Better Back Blueprint. Um, Eva features as well. You know, common common theme throughout all of my programs is Eva, and so she's will be joining us on that too. Yeah, um, and I think yeah, just remember that together we're better. So networking with yourself, Lucky, and other um, professionals in our community. Um, to really support our community is the key. Perfect. Well said. Thanks, guys. As always, making healthy simple. Have a great day, and we'll speak to you later. Cheers.